Hey there, welcome back to another three-way video. Last week, we discussed bursitis and swelling in the knee, as well as jumper's knee. You can have a look at that video by clicking up there. In the first video in this series, which was two weeks ago, we talked about general knee pain, some of its causes, and some things you can do to address it. This week, we'll talk about medial and lateral knee pain and IT band syndrome, PFPS, or runner's knee, and ligament sprains and menisci damage. We're glad you're here. Enjoy the video. We're gonna talk about medial and lateral knee pain, and we're actually gonna put those two together. Medial refers to middle, inside knee pain. Lateral refers to outside, lateral pain. So putting these together actually helps us kind of break down the causes of that pain. So if we think of a suspension bridge that has cables on either side, and if one side tightens up, the other side is going to give a, a lot of slack and loosen up. So for some people, their pain will come from the tight side, and for others, their pain will come from the loose and, and lengthened side. So to fix both of these, it just makes sense to bring balance to both sides. So that's our goal with these exercises, to manage medial and lateral knee pain. Another name for lateral knee pain is IT band syndrome. IT band runs down the side and it's actually a band of tissue. It's not a muscle. So when that gets tight, it can pull here, but it often gets tight because other muscles that it attaches to are pulling it. So this is again why we look at balancing the outside and inside, lateral and medial, to get this good strength and balance functioning around the leg. So this is gonna allow us to focus a contraction on the inside of the quad. We tend to get very dominant with the lateral quad. So this is a great way to target this sort of little teardrop muscle um, to the right of the kneecap on my left leg. So we're gonna take, um, I have this little squishy foam roller here. You can also use a rolled up towel if you don't have a foam roller. And we're just gonna rest it under the knee. Then I take my leg nice and straight across it. With the other leg, you can have it bent for a little more stability. Or if you're comfortable here, you can kind of relax into it. We do wanna make sure you have a little bit of core awareness. So we just don't want you slumping through the whole thing, but we don't need to be completely upright. So I'm just gonna lean into my hands to get kind of comfortable here. So for this, the action is a very small range and it's just gonna involve me straightening my knee and trying to squish the towel or foam roller that I have here. So I like to do it as a hold and we can see that this VMO, the medial quad is firing on under that tension. Then I just relax it. We wanna make sure to have a little control there because it's a small range, it's easy to rush and we wanna make sure we have control through the movement especially if you've been experiencing dis discomfort. So here we control a little lift and straightening of the leg, extension on the knee and a little relax. If sitting upright is a bit uncomfortable, you can just adjust and lean into the wall. It's gonna give you a little more support so you can really focus on what's happening at the knee. So I'm gonna take my knee up for this and then I'm just going to straighten and hold, aware of a little bit of core tension and then control it down. Strengthen and hold. We can see that medial quad coming on and then controlling down. So we're gonna lie on our back with our core turned on so that our joints are aligned. We wanna think about having a little bit of a lift from our pubic bone for some deep core tension. My ribs are down and not flaring, but my spine is nice and lengthened. From here, my feet are firmly planted and my knees are together. Then I'm just gonna take my hands to the side for a little bit of tension so I have some good support through the movement. With this one, I'm gonna take one knee at a time and I'm slowly gonna open it and control it as I drop it to the side. So we tend to have tightness in here even if those adductors are weak. So this is gonna help us stretch that. But as we get to the end of that stretch, fire on that adductor in its most lengthened position and bring it back up. And then we would just go into the other side. 
So it doesn't look like much, but the tricky part of this is that we want our pelvis to stay stable and our hip bones to always point straight up to the ceiling. So if I'm very tight as I drop, I might feel like my hips want to roll along with it. We don't want that. We want to bring that back up here. Feel up that end range, stop where you need to. If you notice that at this point the hips start to rock, stop, control that, and then bring it back up. And you might have a discrepancy from one side to the other, and of course if there's a side where you're experiencing pain, that's probably going to be the one where you're a bit limited. So just go nice and slowly, and really try to test and challenge where you can go without overdoing it. So I'm lying on my side and we want to think about having a strong, core activated, stacked posture. So hips are going to be stacked one on top of the other and we're not crunching in here. When I do that, abs come on and I'm slightly lifted, not sinking into the mat. And I'm just going to relax my head here. So to start, I will have both my knees up, but I am going to be working this top leg from a straight leg position. When I do that, I want to make sure that my hips haven't rolled. So I'm still going to keep those stacked. Then what I'm going to do is place my top hand on my bottom knee. This is going to help me anchor myself so that when my legs move in around, I don't roll away. But also it's going to help ensure that my hips don't rotate through the movement. So it's a little bit of an accountability booster. So straight leg here, and I'm just going to draw a rectangle just like it sounds. So I'm going to take that leg forward without any change through the torso. I'm going to take that leg up until I find natural resistance and I'm going to feel some work happening on the outside of my hip. Then I'm going to take that leg back. This is kind of the tricky part because we want to feel out your natural hip extension, not lumbar extension, which means I don't want my low back to move and I don't want my hips to rock. I'm just going to feel that glute really fire on at my end range. Then I lower that down to make the bottom right of the rectangle and I bring it forward back to the start. So we're really going to try to focus the glute range, so the back of the movement, to get into our TFL, glute med, and there's some smaller external rotators working around the hip as well. So this is going to get all around strength around the outside of the hip. So just go slowly, make sure you're controlling, and do try to work your range so you're finding your true hip extension without cheating it with rolling the hip. Runner's knee or patellofemoral pain syndrome, PFPS, is characterized by pain under the kneecap or in front of the kneecap. So this differs from medial and lateral knee pain in that you actually feel it in the front of your knee instead of the sides of your knee. This is often caused by overuse, impact, and poor biomechanics during movements. So this is why it's called runner's knee is because if you have an imbalance in the hip, knee, foot, you can have something occur at the knee that makes it feel painful. This is actually more common in women because of what's called a Q angle. A Q angle is the angle at which your hips orientate downwards towards your knees. So for women, because we have wider hips, you actually have more instances of the knees going inward from the hip, which can put you at a disadvantage when it comes to runner's knee but it puts you at an advantage for power lifting. This exercise is an adductor side plank. This is gonna be focusing on the inside thigh component of your knee stability. So you're gonna come down onto a floor, you're gonna need a bench setup or a cube, a block, anything that you can elevate your knee onto once you're on the ground. So we're gonna come down onto the ground and I'm going to get myself set up into a side plank. If you don't know how to do a side plank, make sure that you check out our side plank video. You can find it on YouTube. So I'm going to get my knee on that bench and I'm going to first get into that nice side plank position and I'm going to think about pressing down with my knee to get myself up off the floor. So instead of pushing myself with my bottom glute like you regularly do in a side plank, I'm going to be pushing down with my top leg. So I'm going to push down with that leg, making sure that I have a nice strong position. I can use that bottom leg as a regression to help me hold this if I need to. But if you're feeling stable and strong and nothing's hurting, then you can lift that bottom leg off the ground. 
If you want to progress this further, think of squeezing that bench between your thighs. Again, you should feel this along the inside of your thigh. If this is too challenging, move down onto the bench so that more of your thigh is supported by the bench. If this becomes too easy, move away from it and you can begin to start going into a straight leg variation if your knee feels safe. If you're having knee pain, remember, taking the regressed version and building your way up is much safer and is going to bulletproof your knee for later instead of re-injuring that knee. So if you do feel comfortable, confident, and ready, then you can go into straight leg variations, which are a lot more challenging. Ligament and menisci damage differ from the other injuries that we've talked about so far because it's actual damage to the structure that supports the bones around the knee. The other ones are pain associated usually with muscle imbalances or overuse. This is actual damage that can be occurred through an acute injury, um, like getting a blow to the side of the knee or getting hit by a car or anything that you can imagine that causes structural damage. If you have ligament or meniscus menisci damage, make sure that you see a medical professional to make sure that you are cleared for exercise. Although these exercises are extremely useful and might actually be assigned to you, you want to make sure that you talk to your medical professional first and that you might be assigned a kinesiologist or another type of therapist in order to get better. Some of the things that you can do in order to assist ligament and meniscus damage or menisci damage is work the muscle tissue around the joint. So you might want to start with some passive therapy, massage, heat, and relaxation to try to get that swelling out. And then you're going to want to start working through ranges of motion, just like we did in the swelling and bursitis. Then you're going to want to progress to some other exercises. We recommend doing the exercises from week one and then progressing into the exercises from week two. Yes, we want you to do all the exercises that we've listed over the past two weeks for ligament and menisci damage. Because when you have this type of damage, you get biomechanical imbalances at the knee and you want to treat everything and make everything super strong so that you don't damage the structures inside the capsule again. You want to make everything around it strong enough that you don't damage the inside. Thanks for watching our video. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. We're on social media at 3wave underscore fitness. And we also have a Patreon where you can not only get some great tips and advice that we don't give out to the general public, but also there's a lot of cool options to work with us directly there too. Be sure to check that out. Ciao.